Welcome! In today's video, we're going to be going over some very common troubleshooting tips for DS Control Point. In last week's video, we talked about how to set up DS Control Point and connect the systems. In this video, we're going to be dealing specifically with some common troubleshooting tips and tricks that will help us when DS Control Point doesn't necessarily do what we want it to do. So we're going to be performing all of this on a working live system. Due to some of the errors and their randomness, I won't be able to show everything. In times when I can't, I'm going to give an explanation of what you might see and a resolution to that issue. So we're going to take a look at our very first question, and that is DS Control Point does not ask me to log in. Now we have some situations where customers wants it to ask and other times where it does not want to ask. I'm going to talk about what generates both of those. And to understand, we have to go into setup as we saw in the video and then into systems tab. This is where all of our system connections live. So once in the systems tab, we can see we're connected, our name, our IP, and the user. This particular question all stems from the user field. Now to be able to edit this, we must disconnect first. We right click on it and select disconnect from the drop down menu. Once disconnected, you'll see that the connected icon is now red, showing the system has been disconnected. We can now right click and select edit system. Okay, so once we right click and we go to edit, once the system has been disconnected, and we're gonna come to this screen here. Now, for this particular question, we wanna pay attention to the username and password sections. Now, what causes it not to prompt is when DS Quick Setup is run, it automatically inputs the user information here as admin. So that way, it will always automatically connect. Now, if we want users to always authenticate themselves, then we have to take that information out and click OK. Now what happens is every time DS Control Point is run, it will ask for a username and password. So now, armed with that knowledge, let's take a look at what happens when we remove the username and password and then click OK. As we saw here, it will immediately prompt for the username and password. This is the same thing that will happen if DS Control Point is closed and then reopened. Now we're just going to take a look at this here just for a moment while I'll explain why this is important. Later on in the video, we are going to get into reporting available in DS Control Point. Now for reporting to properly work, we want to make sure all users are logging in as an individual. The reason why, this will help us identify who is making what changes on the system. Without that information, we can only see one login with no information as to what specific individual performed that operation. Once logged in and reconnected, let's go ahead and take a look at the anatomy of this connection list. The first icon, connected, that's going to show if we're connected or not. Red indicates disconnected, yellow indicates connecting, and green indicates connected. Now let's talk a little bit about the first two icons here as it directly relates to the username and password and auto prompt for login issues we just discussed. The first icon connected. Green indicates we are connected to that system. Yellow indicates it is connecting to that system and then red indicates it is not connected. Now, the auto option, what that says is any system here that is tagged as auto connect, once DS control point is launched, it will automatically attempt to connect to those systems. How this directly relates to the username and password prompt is if this is not set to auto, when DS control point is first opened, it will connect to no system and does not prompt for a username and password. To actually connect in that instance, we have to go into the systems tab, double click the system, and at that point, if there is a username and password that is already entered, the system will connect. 
If there is no username and password that is entered, the system will then prompt you to enter a username and password. So now we're going to take a look at another commonly asked question, which is how do I save my live configuration so when operators open up the program, they don't have to drag cameras back over. Now to do that, we're going to need to get into the application settings. There are two ways to do that from our screen here. We can click on either setup in the upper left hand corner represented by the three computers and then click application settings. However, on our system, since we've already visited setup, the setup tab is already present. We can click on that. We click on application settings. Under application settings, under the general tab, we'll see save last live configuration on exit. What this does once checked is remembers the last live configuration that the operator set before it closed. Once closed and reopened, it will automatically populate that view. The next one we're going to take a look at is alarm pop-up. This can present itself as constant motion alarms that pop up on the system. We can find the alarm pop-up setting in setup under alarm pop-up. Once here, you can see that show motion alarms on our system is not checked. This is the cause of motion alarms that constantly block the live video view. What happens is when enabled, any camera on the system that sees motion will cause a pop-up stating that. In order to prevent that from happening, uncheck this. And that will wrap it up for our first video in the troubleshooting series for DS Control Point. Please stay tuned for more videos. If you found this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. And remember, at Pelco, we've got it all covered.